straight, straight in there. Look. Oh, mind you, it's third in it or fourth. Yeah, oh, uh, oh yeah, stop mate. it. I used to move my tits like this. People would think because of my heart beating. Oh, hey, buddy, hey, pal. <coughs> oh my god. Clear my throat. Clear Pro my throat. Virus. Mate. <laughs> Hi everyone and welcome to the third Q&A with AOD. Finally we've got all the guys, all the boys in one place at the same time to answer some of your questions. Um, we'll get straight in with it. The first one we've got is talking about mindset. The question is, uh, what are your tips for struggling with negative thoughts about a movement pre-workout? Uh, for example, um, worried I'm gonna feel I've gone backwards at this or I'm not good at these. So should we kick off as in? Yeah, that? yeah, so... Um... There's a lot of things you can do like when you're addressing this topic and I think today I'm just going to stick on, on one thing, something that I've been doing with my athletes a bit recently and it's to do with positive self-talk and then that's leading into visualisation. So positive self-talk essentially is, is going to be as, as it's described, right? So um, just talking to yourself, communicating with yourself um, positively yeah. and, and kind of reinforcing positive behaviours and, and not trying to associate things being so negative. So, um, so let's say if you had, let's say we're talking about snatch, someone's worried about the snatch because yeah. they've been working on snatch. Pre-workout, what's the sort of thing? Are you talking about actually verbally speaking or in your own head talking to yourself? Well, I mean, it depends what works best for you. Yeah. Um, and then within positive self-talk, um, I've got like three little points which okay. are kind of progressions, if anything, like, like the things you can move, move along with. So the first one is going to be creating a mantra, so kind of like um, something that you're going to repeat to yourself in the scenarios that's going to help you believe it better. So like I said, snatching, it's um, I am a good snatcher, or say it's an aspect of the snatch yeah. you struggle with, like like overhead squatting, because like mobility or something like that, it's like, I will be able to receive this in a comfortable bottom position. I will be able to do that. Like you're telling yourself what you can do. Yeah. Once you've established a mantra, you're then going to move on to fitting that into scenarios. So we kind of did that then. Snatching, when you come to snatching, using it in practice. Yeah. Um, and then the final point of positive self-talk is gonna be what I give to my athletes a lot now is when you're away from the training competing scenario um, is visualization. Uh, we talked about this a little bit before, but um, visualizing yourself in the first person, practicing uh, the skill or movement or whatever it is you're worried about, but being successful yeah. and not letting negative thoughts creep in and just playing through in your head, rehearsing things while you're being successful. Yeah. Um, so when we're also on positive self-talk, there's actually a good bit of research into it. And the stuff that I read recently um, was to do with a 20 minute bike test. And basically they had nine cyclists in a group. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and they all tested a 20 minute like average watt test. FTP. Say, yeah. um, they tested it, then they came back and they retested, but then they broke it up into three subgroups. Um, and basically the conclusion was that the group that were having the most positive self-talk uh, reinforced were the one that improved the most. All groups improved yeah, yeah. because they were retesting. So, so they, were, they were talking to themselves, either out loud or in their head. They didn't have somebody giving them positive self-talk. So the, so the three groups were negative self-talk, yes. self-enforced positive self-talk, right. um, and then um, assisted positive self-talk. Oh, okay. And the assisted, he did the best results. Yeah. Then it's the personal, yeah. Um, and then the negative. You'd expect that, though, right? Improved, but by the least. So yeah. when, when you say negative, that's like, say for instance, in the snatch scenario, that's being like, I, instead of coming up to the bar and thinking, I don't want to miss this lift, or I don't want to drop this in front of me. Yeah, like, this that's is going to be ne heavy. That's that negative yeah, side yeah, of it. Yeah, yeah, that's that yeah. negative well, side say of it. So you do a snatch, and instead of finishing the rep, you've probably got another one to do, and being, and being like, oh yeah, I did this well, you instantly turn and be like, oh, this wasn't good. Yeah. You're taking the negatives away from the scenario. So. Um, to kind of wrap that point up is um, practice positive self-talk, um, highlight the positives of what you're doing, yeah. think about how far you've come in, in a movement, and then also, if something um, doesn't quite go the way you plan, try not to massively lean on those, those negative effects. So say you miss a snatch, try and think of it as, what can I do to make this better next time, yeah. rather than that went poorly because of this reason, and then basically beating yourself up about it. 
Yeah, sounds good. Anything to add, Ads? No, that's good. No. I think I think that whole mental side of training is an avenue, like you said, you can go so far down. There's so many different things to think about. So just covering that today is good. good yeah, you could know. go down the rabbit yeah, hole. Yeah, nail, nail one first and yeah, then yeah, focus yeah. on moving on to the next. Uh, so second one we got is from Charlie. It's about shoulder impingements. He says, how do you reduce slash stop a shoulder impingement or how would you warm, out, warm up sorry, for a workout to help prevent it? Yeah, okay, so shoulder impingement or any sort of impingement basically happens when the joint doesn't roll, slide and glide how it's meant to with an associated motion. So for instance, when you talk like a shoulder impingement, the shoulder can move through extension, can move through abduction, and it can move through what we call scaption, which is that middle sort of plane, like 45 degrees. So if you have, say, tight restricted scaps, or uh, yeah, like a muscular imbalance somewhere, you're really, really tight in your shoulders, what's gonna happen is you're gonna be restricted in how you move, and when you come to a point of, say, scaption all the way overhead, your joint of your shoulder is at the top of the socket and it basically gets, get, gets pinched. That's what impingement is. Then everything gets inflamed and then that's when you get pain when you try to move. So the biggest thing with, say for instance, the shoulder, shoulder impingement is first off, making, you, making sure you move properly. So making sure you have full range of motion through all of those different planes that we said. So shoulder extension, scaption and abduction. If you're at a point where you think, right, if I go into shoulder extension, as soon as I get up to here, it's really, really tight. I can't quite get all the way overhead that's when we want to start working on that mobility okay so you can easily get into that position then it can be things like everyday life for instance we're all sat here fairly fairly good posture if you always find yourself super internally rotated so your shoulders are always rolling forward yeah. maybe you're on your laptop maybe you're driving like this you're always going to be getting stuck into these positions if then you go to say lift or again go into shoulder extension when you're rolled forward into this bad position that's when an impingement is going to take place so trying to make sure your posture is correct you're moving you're moving properly um, and yeah really mechanics of the movement is what i'd say is the most important thing then making sure you can move loosely through all those ranges of motion motion in a shoulder so in terms of a warm-up it would be properly activating your upper back so something like a banded external rotation where you can open up your chest make sure your shoulder blades are rolled back get into this good posture position with your shoulders rolled rolled back not rolling forward that's that's yeah. really so, so it could be could be a mobility thing could be a mobility but, thing but what you're saying is that essentially there's not enough room and the, yeah, and if you the, don't if you don't move properly in the shoulder joint, you're gonna if you don't move properly if there's a limitation because you're rolled forward or you've got uh, exceptionally tight muscles and you don't move properly, that's where that impingement's gonna take place. It might not necessarily be a mobility issue. Yeah. Okay. A little bit more on the shoulder impingement. So when we're looking at shoulder impingement, we're we're largely just looking at like ball and socket joints. Mm. Um, so the other place where you have those in your body is your hips. Um, and so you're talking about like your posture in your upper body and how your shoulders are set, is that equally gonna work the same with your hips, but how your pelvis is set? So like particular people trying to squat to a certain position mm -hmm. will have mechanical blockages. Yeah. Not because of necessarily like mobility restrictions, mm. because of pelvic setting. Yeah, 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 like, yeah, definitely will. I mean that whole that whole at the end of the day, it comes back to there's no one size fits all. There's no like perfect front rack for every person. There's no perfect squat position for every person. Like depending on how your body is made, depending on the length of length of your bones, how your pelvis is set, it's going to limit you on where you move. So always trying to be like, right, I can see how Lu Xiao Jun squats. I'm going to squat exactly like that. That's not really going to happen. That's not yeah. doable for the majority yeah. of people. But so trying to fit, you're trying to learn what works for you and move to the best mechanics of your own body. Yeah. If that makes sense. Yeah. But you could do some like banded hip distractions to help yeah, you yeah, set, definitely, right? yeah, definitely yeah, you could yeah. try and open up those hips. Like, like we say, in terms of a warm up, I mean, you don't just wanna, we say activation, but equally like if you have really internally rotated shoulders, you could be trying to activate in that really internally rotated position. So it's sort of like learning, learning what a good position is first, and then doing mobility into that position, and then trying to strengthen that new position. Yeah. Okay, okay next question. Well, like I said, this one leads in nicely from Helen says about um, what are the, the, your favorite um, upper body stretches, mobility work for pecs and lats post-workout. Um, and like I was saying, we can overlay some videos over the top here, but um, that's it. Um, the first one's gonna be this uh, overhead PVC reach back. Uh, you wanna do that on the bench. You can have your feet up. What's important to do is make sure that you have your knees up so your lower back stays into, into the bench, right? You don't wanna be arching um, with your lower back off the ground. 
uh, off the bench, sorry. Uh, the second one is gonna be a like shoulder extension forward fold, you know the one, um, the one you give to me yeah, in the program, yeah. um, where you grab a plate, if you can't quite get your hands together, it's gonna make it easier, grab a plate, fold forward, shoulders extended, but again, just like you were talking about, there's no point in doing that one with an internally mm. rotated shoulder, you've gotta try and make sure that you open up. And then uh, the last one is gonna be the super front rack. You know what I'm talking about, where you get on your, you get on your knees, yeah. PVC, you can have a weight in there, comes back, really trying to open up the lats and the thoracic again. Yeah. Chest and lats, those would be yeah. my three favorite ones. Yeah, I think that's good, like you made a little point there, saying it's really easy to be seeing a video of a stretch and just be like, oh, okay, I'm just gonna do that and do it completely wrong. Yeah. Say for instance, if you wanna try and think about stretching your pec and your lats, you need to, you need to actually make sure you're doing the stretch correctly and not just compensating by maybe extending your spine or rolling your shoulders forward. So yeah. really try and take care. Stretches shouldn't be one of those things that you just drop down into at the bottom of a bottom of yeah. a workout and sort of like be an afterthought. If you're gonna try and stretch properly and actually see improvements and yeah. your flexibility from it, you really need to think about doing the movement properly just like you would a squat or a snatch, okay? To try and get the points of performance to be exactly correct so you actually feel the stretch in the correct place. Yeah, like that, like that. Uh, next one is from our good friend, Busy Roberts. Uh, which domain or would you choose to maintain optimal performance in a 30 minute training window? So I'm assuming mm. that Busy here doesn't have a lot of time to train, um, 30 when, minutes. When he says domain, is he saying like, what are you gonna get the most bang for your buck doing? Yeah, I'm assuming he meant, yeah. maybe meant like energy system type yeah. thing, like yeah. which yeah. one would yeah. you yeah. prioritize? Yeah. So we can talk about that. Yeah. I'm assuming he doesn't have a lot of time. Uh, he's got half an hour to train. Yeah. Uh, what do you what do you do? What are your thoughts? Yeah, so when you wanna when you wanna try and improve overall in performance in a 30 minute window, it's gonna be really tricky. So you need yeah. to try and be as concise and efficient as you can. So in a workout like that, like let's just say 30 minutes in and out of the door. Yeah. So as soon as you get in, you need to spend 10 minutes warming up. Now that warm up could be incorporating skills work yeah. into the warm up. So say for instance, you wanna improve your handstands or you wanna improve like your pull-ups. You can still do skill work, but just keep it low volume, low intensity. So you're not gonna be doing crazy volume of butterfly pull-ups or handstand push-ups, but you could be working on hollow body positions, handstand holds, thing like, things like that. Like basic skill development and also gonna get you really, really warm in the shoulders, in your core, in the right position for your actual workout that you're gonna do. So for example, like warm up 10 minutes, 10 minute EMOM, first minute, 15 cow row, second minute, 20 second hollow hold, five strict pull-ups. Yeah, something, something, like, that, something yeah. like that. Maybe, maybe not even the sonic as intense as a, as no. a strict pull-up, could be scapular pull-ups with a yeah. good hollow body hanging on the bar. Um, yeah, arch rocks into hollow rocks, wall walks, just simple things like that. Like keeping it fairly low intensity. In, you in get, part, yeah, exactly, yes. You're getting your, all your skill work in nice and early while you're fairly fresh, but also where you can think cool. about the movement a little bit more because it's a warm up. So we've got 20 minutes They've got go. 20 minutes left. So if I've got 20 minutes for a session, what I'm gonna say you're gonna do is basically try and do some form of intervals. So that might be every five minutes for four rounds. You're gonna do something nice and high intensity. You're not gonna try and hit a 20 minute aerobic workout because I'm not saying it's a waste of time, but when you can train a little bit more anaerobic, you can cover more bases mm. if you hit the right intensity. Okay, so you want your heart rate to be really, really high for that short amount of time. So every five minutes for four rounds, you might only get a total of four or five minutes actual working, but it wants to be similar to that sort of like Fran intensity, okay, go in max effort. So it could be um, assault bike sprints with some fairly heavy power snatches into some pull-ups or some like handstand push-ups, something like that. Something that's gonna cover your full body effectively. So that's why you wanna pick something like a snatch, something like an erg, like a row or an assault bike. And then some, again, higher skill element that's gonna have to think about your coordination and also work your, work your course. So that's why something like a snatch is so good. Or you could e equally do 20 minute EMOM, like Mike was saying again, but keeping it really high intensity. So 20 minutes, every fourth minute is a rest minute. You do something really high um, cardiac output, like burpees, rowing, running, assault bike. Then you do something fairly heavy, some deadlifts, some snatches, some clean and jerks. And then you do something a little bit more skill element that forces you to be, again, under fatigue while working the skill. But you're only trying to work for like, um 30 seconds of each minute. Yeah, 30 seconds of each minute. High. So keep the intensity super, yeah. super high. There's no point spending 20 minutes sitting your heart rate at like 140. Well, you could, you can. You 100% can, you, yeah. can, you 100% can. But if you're thinking optimal what's most the optimal performance when you've got that limited time domain, and we're just generalizing here, so don't know how many times you can work out in the week, but you want to try and keep that heart, you want to get that heart rate basically up to up to 80, 90%. You really want to yeah. try and push it really hard for that short working, working interval. Yeah. 
Any other thoughts on that? No, I think that's good. Like, I think it's definitely important that you have that like integrated approach that you're much better off trying to train that like anaerobic system in the short window, mm. but then like integrating barbells, integrating yeah, yeah, weights. Sure. You're, you're not necessarily gonna be like building massive amounts of strength, no. you're definitely gonna be maintaining yeah. Yeah. while also improving other areas. Yeah. Um, I think if you're looking at someone who's got restricted time to train, um, I'm probably gonna advise them towards like three to four sessions a week, but then extend it to 60 minutes. So then you can really get, like you are getting better. So yeah. the actual total time could be yeah. the same. If we're, t we're yeah. talking about like training to get better mm. rather than like exercising. Yeah. yeah. If you kind of get what I'm saying, like you could do 30 minutes each day and carve that bit of time out and you're exercising. Yeah, and you're healthy, you're fit, your health yeah, yeah. and that's gonna be really good. But if you like are interested in physically getting better, there's no reason you can't get better with just a 60 minute session yeah. four times a week kind of thing. Yeah. Um, and then it's actually gonna be a fairly similar structure to that, but you just can kind of separate things a little bit more. Yeah. You can afford to spend a bit more time lifting, doing your skills, warming up, and then you can have your conditioning at the end. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Sounds good. Great. Uh, the next question we have is very prevalent at the moment because it comes about self-isolating. Um, it actually asks about nutrition tips for self-isolating, but we had a little think and what I wanted to do was just talk about some health tips for self-isolating. Um, not obviously giving advice on how you should self-isolate, but essentially what we were thinking about was that now everyone's going to be working from home or not in school, whatever it might be. Um, they're going to spend a lot more time at home and the temptation is probably to, I don't know, if you're young, to like play on the Xbox all day. Play on your Xbox or watch some Netflix or like whatever. And essentially I wanted to give some, yeah, <laughs> some, um, some little tips you could do, especially if you're a parent working from home or something like that. Uh, the number one thing is going to be stand up more. Ideally, if you can find yourself, build yourself like a standing workstation. Now it doesn't need to be like a sweet standing desk like I have. But, um, but if you can like ice a pile of books and stuff and then you can stand, you can be working for a bit and then you can sit down for 20 minutes so that over the course of the day, if you're working for five hours, um, two and a half of that, you stood up, two and a half of that, you sat down. Um, because it's so important for our health at the moment to be a priority, standing up as much as you can is gonna be important. And um, when you're self-isolating, I can see how easy to sit down. Yeah, okay. um, My second one would be about uh, taking cold showers. Uh, or alternating, hot and cold. Um, so something you can do quite easily to make it actionable, jump in the shower, get it nice and hot, 20 seconds of hot, whap it right down to cold to the point where it makes you inhale, like cold shock kind of thing. Uh, 10 seconds there if you can cope, and then whap it back up to hot. And um, you can do like five, 10 rounds of that. Don't be in the shower too long, wasting water, but, but essentially that's another good way to, um, to get a quick like health fix in, yeah. if you like. Other than that, what, um, what, what would that be for? Uh, well, there's, there's a few things with that, but essentially you can get blood flow yeah. from, from doing the hot cold contrast. Um, but also you can get, and I don't want to say the word and start like getting attacked on here, but some like immune system boosting properties from doing uh, cold water immersion. Uh, so cold showers can play into that. Um, but read up on some of that if you if you want to get some full details. Yeah, yeah. So then other, other tips, thinking like it's that routine. Routine can really help when you are self isolating. So yeah. in terms of like the actual nutrition side of things, like trying to get into a habit of right, I'm going to get up at this same time each day. I'm going to eat this for breakfast. It can get a little bit boring over the time, but actually having a plan for what you're going to eat in the morning, not just getting up being like, oh, I'm a little tired. I've got to work in 30 minutes. What do I have? And you end up chucking some cocoa pops into a bowl yes. instead you think right i know every morning i'm gonna have my I'm gonna have my eggs i'm gonna have my spinach i'm gonna have my omelet whatever it is so you always know that in the morning that's what you gotta get up and that's what you're gonna make so you set out that time for yourself to actually eat the right things yeah. and then and then really trying to exercise each day just to, like we like we said before it doesn't have to be anything crazy busy you can just be 30 minutes of just moving because the last thing you want to do is spend all day inside just sat down or even even just working you want to try and actually get the heart rate up a little bit and do some form of exercise so just 30 minutes there's loads of stuff out there now online um, loads of different programs loads of different like uh, YouTube like follow along sort of adult PE classes so, so air the apocalypse uh, yeah online program like something you can do just to get your heart rate up a little bit and yeah. actually move for 30 minutes a day I, I think um, my kind of view on all this self-isolation thing is like it needs to be a mindset shift 
people are going to get isolated and all they're going to think about is the outside world and what they have been doing and they're yeah. like, I'm missing this, I'm missing this, I'm missing this. And it comes back to that positive self-talk. Okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's going to have a lot of negative mental connotations. Yeah. So I think you need to be like, this is now the scenario I'm in. These are my restrictions. What can I control? What can I do? Exactly, controllables, right? Yeah. And what can I do to optimize my time doing this? Um, one of the examples is actually going to be um, Helen, who ha schools are shut now, but she had to isolate because of work. And it's like, you've got time to, to work on things. Let's think of something new, like start reading, start learning, yeah. whether that's to improve your training, whether yeah. that's to improve your work. Um, and I think that's going to be the most important thing for everyone is mind, mindset shift rather than trying to live your old life in isolation. Yeah, definitely. definitely. Trying to take positives out of the yeah. situation. That's yeah. a good point. That's a really good point. No, I like that. So those are a few tips for self-isolating. Like yeah. it. Um, next one also comes from Ollie. It's about, um, he's obviously stuck in at home just like a lot of people are and he's only got a 10 kilogram plate and I think he said uh, an ab rollout wheel, you know, like yeah, the ab roll them. And he's asking for workout suggestions. I mean, um, you want to quickly fire through a couple of workout suggestions? Mm, ab rollout wheel, I mean, you just got a, I, I use that a little bit when I injured my knee. Um, and you just progressively overload that. Yeah. Do like five sets, uh, 90 seconds off in between, start at whatever, like eight reps, and then just try and see how many you can build up to. Um, Ollie actually mentioned to me before when he was in that he used to be able to do them from standing, standing up, right? Yeah. 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 So Video your, evidence, please. Yeah, yeah, there, yeah, there's your goal, like set some reps, just yeah. trying to build to that. Uh, there's, that's impressive. There's your strength work for your midline. Mm. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, I mean, in terms of the 10 kilo plate, like we said, with, with busy 30 minutes to train, like you can still get your heart rate up really, really high. There's no point yeah. spending an hour trying to do all these funky exercises with a 10 kilo plate. You could do a 10 minute AMRAP as many rounds as possible, as fast as possible, doing burpees onto the plate, plate ground to overhead, yeah. um, overhead squats with the plate, oh, reverse just lunges. Take all the sweet just moves. To, yeah, yeah, just a combination of all those put together, but try and keep it short and sharp and really fast. Again, get that heart rate up. Don't feel like you have to do, yeah, like, oh, I need to do 100 front, I need to do 100 squats with this plate, I need to do 100 press ups on my plate, and where that heart rate's actually going to be fairly low and it's going to take you a long time to get through it. When you've only got a short amount of time to train, you want to get the most out of it, try and be really fast, try and keep, get that high, into, high intensity in there. So just 10 minutes of pick three or four movements, 10 to 12 reps of each, and go as um, many rounds as you can, as fast yeah. as you can, yeah. Cool. Well, we've had core and midline strength work, we've had like body weight, and wrap type stuff. I'm gonna just think on the fly and think of something else. Like, how about uh, how long can you hold that plate over your head for? Yeah. Nice. That's, that's good. Go. Yeah. yeah. I do. Go. Like three, two, three, two, one, go. And you can do it in different positions. Yeah. Obviously, standing, yeah. sitting, like squat, like and overhead squat, yeah. and lunge, yeah. a split squat. Uh, and then my other one would be I how many times like can you flip it and catch it? <laughs> yeah. That's well, from that like grip yeah. strength, I like it. Yeah. So grip strength. We do that. I'm fun. actually looking forward to going into isolation. Yeah. Yeah. I think. I think one thing. One thing we've actually talked about a lot with our online program as well is this whole idea of like home workouts, people just want to do that like 10, 30 minutes to just get the heart rate up and do something. But if you want to actually improve your fitness or improve yeah. like in certain areas, you can still do that yeah. at home. You just need to be a bit more creative and think about that. So like, for instance, holding the plate overhead for as long as you can, that's going to really work on your isometric overhead in, strength for things, fail, like, for, things like overhead, for things like overhead squatting, yeah, and that overhead mobility. So yeah. if you get a bit creative with it, you can still actually work on improving your performance for certain sports yeah. and for certain things. Like in the Apocalypse program, we've got Harry from Writes, writes the strength parts. We have like a lot of isometric work, don't we? Which I'm not sure is like you see a lot of these body weight AMRAPs going up. But we've got these isometric stuff and dynamic plyometric stuff to help with that kind of thing because mm. you can, it is still possible to improve things like that, improve performance yeah. at home. It's just a bit harder and not as conventional. Yeah. Um, cool. Last one then comes from uh, Harry and he's talking about um, nutrition. Now, nutrition's a tough one. He says, uh, someone mentioned about calories and macros. How do you work out your macro ratios? Um, then he gives his details, which is helpful, age, weight, um, and body fat, which is helpful when you're looking at nutrition. But we kind of talked about this, didn't we, before, that um, it's very important to stress when we go into this that there is no one diet that is better or, or is, is the best, okay? There might be certain types of diet that serves um, that, um, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Suits. Suits, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Suits, different types of people or different individuals, like the three of us. A different diet might suit me better, as he versus Harry, but that's not to say that it's better, and that depends on all sorts of factors, which we don't, we don't want to go into. So what we said, advice to Harry was, essentially, 
pick a split and start. So um, obviously, like, don't be ridiculous, like, uh, 80% protein or whatever. Yeah, just gonna be yeah. Easy starting point would yeah. be 40, 30, 30. So 40% yeah. carbs, 30% protein, 30% fat. And then, like you said, see how that fits you for a month or but two. But you need to measure it. Yeah, yeah. So actually make sure you get that correctly. Yeah. So measure your daily intake of, of uh, calories and then split that into your um, carbs, protein, and fat. Yeah. And then try and work, and then basically see how that suits you for a month. Yeah. Okay? If you find you're a little bit sluggish and it's not working very well, you might need to up your carb ratio. If you find that you're gaining body fat, maybe you need to like again change your carbs or your fat ratio. So it's all going to be dependent on each short person. Yeah, I mean, works for you. yeah, absolutely. The, yeah, a um, couple of points there is that um, one, uh, you, if you're exercising a lot, you probably want to keep your protein at like between one, like about 1.5 grams per yeah. kg of body weight as like a rough guide. Um, the other one is see how your stomach reacts because someone, you know, some people uh, have intolerances you might not even know about. If you start eating loads more fat, that might upset your stomach. The best kind of diet is going to be one that you can maintain um, as long as it's also helping you progressively move towards your goals. So um, just because you see some CrossFit Games athlete eats 450 grams of carbs a day doesn't mean you have to. It means you could potentially, but it doesn't mean you have to. So you have to first measure it track and see results because at the end of the day uh, you can woo woo all you like about different diet types and stuff but essentially um result like measurable results is evidence and and, and that is what all you can go off for yourself LD nutrition coming soon coming soon when i finish my 12 more exams but, but we got to self-isolate so <laughs> i can do it in 12 days um anything else about self isolation, about any apocalypse or anything like that? Anything coming up? Um, actually, back on that diet point, so he's asking about macro splits. Yeah. Um, what about calories then? Okay. So obviously, obviously, the macronutrients is made up within within your calorie guidelines. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Would you advise someone like Harry because he he trains very similar to we do as yeah, well, yeah, yeah. like a lot of high intensity stuff? Are you going to advise him to try and sit slightly on like a surplus side or purely? trying to sit as like an equilibrium kind of point. No, good question, really good question. My opinion on this would be, because I've seen a lot of people saying, like it's hard because you can get some fitness trackers and there's some data out there, it's really inaccurate. Mm. Someone would do 10,000 steps a day and say, well my fitness tracker says I've burned 2,500 calories. It's like, no, 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 mm. no. Not, steps, yeah, yeah, it's not well like that. Really, your steps, really, unless it's an excessive thing, your steps and things should be taken as a part of your life. So when you go on my fitness power, it can be like, I'm an active person. Yeah, yeah. They then factor that in, or it's all algorithms, right? But they kind of factor that in. What you should only count as extra is that high intensity workout stuff, in my opinion. Um, best way to do that, heart rate strap. Monitor your heart rate through your exercise, and then you should get an estimated calorie burn. If you're doing something like CrossFit, 50 minute AMRAP, high intensity, you're looking this is very general, but it's going to be about three, 400 calories um, that you can burn up to there. So then you add that on, yeah. you need to make sure that you're eating that. Yeah, like you said, that, that whole surplus thing, I guess that depends on goals. Like, yeah. personally, Harry might want to get bigger, put on a little bit of muscle, put on a little bit of size, then you're going to want to be in that surplus. Yeah. Equally, you might want to lose a little bit of body fat, probably want to be on that lower end, start reducing your calories. If yeah. you're looking for optimal performance, then it's about probably slightly less on the calories, trying to be in that equilibrium side yeah. of things, not worrying about being over or under by slightly, but thinking more about what macros actually suit your body type best and what make you feel the best to actually train and perform. Yeah, definitely. You can do that as well. If something, if you eat something, and now, bearing in mind, we're assuming that all the food you're eating is like, good food, you're not dieting off like pizza and, and stuff like that. Even though you can get calories from pizza, you know what I mean? Um, but you need nutrient dense foods as well. So we're assuming that your food is generally quite healthy and that you're getting a good amount of veg and stuff in throughout the day. Um, otherwise, change that first. Train hard, diet easy, <laughs> diet hard, no. train easy. Uh, oh yeah, you can't out train a bad diet. Huh? You oh, can't no, train a bad diet. What I'm saying is you can't train hard and die hard. No. Oh, oh yeah. You die. As in you mean you can't cut hard type thing. Yeah. Yeah, essentially, yeah. Um, so hope that helps, guys. And if you've got any comments or questions on anything we just said below, uh, if you have any comments or questions, then just ask them below. And uh, thanks for the questions. Hopefully we'll do some more of this stuff. Good luck to anyone. Self-isolating. Stay safe. Stay safe, yeah. Take care.